Hi, my name is Rafael Sumitani. I am an undergraduate student from the Federal University of Minas Gerais. And today, along with my colleague Lucas Costa, I will be presenting our work and our paper, a class of programs that admit exact complexity analysis via Newton's polynomial interpolation. We should start by defining what are cost models and why they are important. Basically, a cost model is an equation that describes the cost of a program based on its parameters. So we can have an idea of how well or how poor it will perform based on its inputs. Now, this can be useful for many reasons. For, for instance, we can guide optimizations and we can find inefficiencies. And one real-world example of this is in the case of predicting the cost of different deep learning models. So Cadence Design Systems, which is the company that sponsored our project, has this problem where they have different implementations of the same deep learning model and they want to choose the most efficient one. So they have these devices called DSPs that basically do speech recognition and image recognition and they use neural network models for these tasks. So they want to pick the most efficient implementation of a deep learning model to make these devices as efficient as possible. And to find the most efficient one, they use cost models that look like this. These cost models are, are usually produced by hand. So an engineer will have to look at all those different uh, implementations and write a cost model that has roughly this shape. So this can be very tiresome for the engineer that's responsible for that because they will have to read those large implementations of deep learning models. Then they will have to write those cost models that are also a bit large. So to make this task easier, our goal in, in our work is to build cost models automatically. OK, but how can performance be actually predicted? There are different approaches for this in literature but one of the most common ones is through empirical complexity analysis. As you can see, we have different works that also use empirical complexity analysis. And this is basically, we analyze the program through multiple executions with different inputs. So at each execution, we relate an input with a performance metric. So after that, we'll have a set of tuples or points and we can apply some, for our some form of curve fitting or polynomial interpolation to those points. And through that, we get a closed form equation that describes the cost of that program based on its parameters. Something important in this context is the performance metric that we shall use. Probably the first one that comes to mind is execution time. But the main problem with this metric is that it can be very hardware and system dependent. So it's not very stable. As we want to build a exact cost model, it's best to have a more reliable metric. So in our work, we use loop iterations. Basically, we argue that the number of times that a loop iterates in a program is a good metric for its performance. Now, one problem that, that arises in the context of empirical complexity analysis is the fact that multiple paths in a program can influence complexity. Look at this example here. As you can see, we have a pair of nested loops inside a conditional. And if we tested this program only with odd inputs, we wouldn't get an accurate description of its cost because it only runs its nested loops if the input is even. So if we only used odd inputs, we would think that it has constant complexity, but this is not the case. So we have to test many different inputs to get an accurate description of the program's cost. We also have the opposite case, where a program has only one single path that influences the overall complexity. Look at this example here. Although the program has conditionals and multiple paths, all those different paths influence a constant factor to the overall complexity. So we wouldn't have to test many different inputs to get an accurate 
description of the program's cost. We call this the SCP property or the single complexity path property in our work. We call programs that bear this property the Newton algorithms. And why is that? Well, these programs can be interpolated using a method called Newton's divided differences that does polynomial interpolation. And this method is very useful for a few different reasons. First, it can easily write the cost of the program as a sum of powers, which is the form that us humans are most used to. But it also is quite cheap as it converges fast to a solution. But it has the downside of only being able to work with single variable polynomials. So we can't work, for instance, with programs that aren't polynomial or that have more than one variable that describe its cost. But as we'll see later, this is not that much of a problem. Okay, so we know that we want to build cost models automatically. We know what kind of programs that we want to work with. So for this task, we have built a tool called Merlin. You can access Merlin's GitHub repository here through the URL or through the QR code. I'll give a short overview of how Merlin works. So Merlin has two modules, one that does instrumentation and the other that does interpolation. Merlin's instrumentation module was implemented as a plugin for the Clang front end. So we work only with C and C++ programs. So Merlin's instrumentation will receive a C or C++ file as an input, and it will verify if that input has the SCP property. In our case, we're working with a single procedure at a time. So we consider that a program is a function. So Merlin's instrumentation will verify if that function has the SCP property. And if it does, it will be instrumented. Instrumentation is done by adding a counter that is incremented at the starting point of every loop in that program. So with that, at the end of a program, that counter will have, will have the number of loop iterations in the program. After that, we can compile this instrumented file and get a binary. With that binary, we can apply many different inputs and run them n times with n inputs. And we'll get a set of samples that relate the input with the counter or our performance metric. So, with those samples, we can apply them to Merlin's interpolation module. Merlin's interpolation was implemented in C++, and it basically applies Newton's divided differences method. And so, with those samples, we can get a polynomial cost model. Notice that we are only working with polynomial programs. Hi guys, my name is Lucas, and as Rafael said before, I'll continue with this presentation from here. So I hope you already know how our tool works. But let's see how this process works with a simple example. And to do that, I will use this bubble sort algorithm implementation. So remember that our goal is to generate a cross model that describes the behavior of this algorithm. We want a function, a cross function, that describes the cost of the bubble sort algorithm. And the first thing we need to do is instrument this program. So by applying the Merlin's instrumentation, the program will look like this. So we, we have a counter that is initialized in the beginning of the program. And the same counter is incremented at two points of this program, at the start of the outer loop and at the start of the inner loop. And the instrumentation can also identify the input variables that influence any loop condition. We make a copy of these variables, like in this case, the parameter n is used for is used in the while statements, and we make a copy of the variable n. And in the final of the program, we output this variable with the the final counter value. So we, in the final, we have a tuple containing the initial value of the variable n and the number of iterations used to sort the, the vector. And after that, 
we we need to generate different points to to be used as samples for the interpolation. So we need a lot of these tuples to to use a sample for the interpolator. Okay, to do that, we create five vectors in this case, and all these vectors are sorted in the ascending order uh, to capture the the worst case of the bubble sort algorithm. And we need to run the bubble sort here for the five vectors. Okay, we have five different inputs, and after running this these inputs with the bubble sort, we got these points. So here we have five tuples. Uh, the first column represents the the vector length, and the second column represents the the value of the counter. So it represents the number of iterations used to sort each each vector. So with these points, we can we can build the divided difference table. So this this is the first step of the total divide difference population, and as you can see. In this case, the greatest order divide difference operator we have found has the grid two. It means that the cost function for for the bubble sort will have a maximum degree of two. So we will have this table, and what do we will do with that? So with this table, we can continue with the process and generate the polynomial that describe the bubble sort algorithm. And this is the polynomial that we found for this, this implementation with these inputs. And this, this describes the, the worst case of the bubble sort algorithm, counting the, the number of iterations used to sort these, these vectors. So, okay, we know how Merlin works. And now we shall address the experiments we we done as part of our work. So with the, this experiment, we are trying to answer uh, two research questions. Um, the first question is, how common are SCP programs? So this is a question that relates to how often the SCP property occurs in real-world scenarios, in real-world programs. And the second question is, how many programs can Merlin describe? For this experiment, we've used the Jotai benchmark collection. So, Jotai is a collection of benchmarks that are mined from open source repositories. And it is composed of single functions written in C. So, each program of Jotai uh, contains a function and its function is written in C. You can find more information about this benchmark accessing its repository on GitHub. You can find the link to the, the GitHub repository or the description of this video. Okay, for this benchmark, we took 950 C programs. And as I said before, these programs are mined from open source repositories. And with that, we believe that they represent real world applications. So we, we believe that we are, we are testing our, our tool with real world programs real-world scenarios. And to answer the first question about how common are the SCP programs, we use Merlin's instrumentation to count this, the occurrence of the, the SCP property among these Jotai benchmarks. And doing that, we got a total of 766 SCP programs, which represents 80% of the total of Jotai programs. And one observation we had while doing that is the SCP property is prevalent among shorter codes. So large codes uh, usually are more complex and usually have one more than one complexity path. And about the second research question, to know how many programs Marlin can describe, we must find the number of programs that can be described by an one variable by at most one variable polynomial. So a problem we had while we were doing that is that Jotai, bench, Jotai programs usually come with few inputs. 
So they usually have one or two inputs. And this is not enough to, to run the interpolation. To run the interpolation for this program, it was necessary to, to add more inputs manually and do that for 766 programs would take a lot of hard work, a lot of handwork. And to make this task easier, we are using sample. So we took two samples of 16 programs from these 766 programs. And doing that, we, we got a margin of error of 20%. Uh, with a confidence level of 95%. Okay, so after obtaining the samples and adding inputs when needed, we use the modeling to instrument and interpolate each of these programs. And after conducting this, this experiment, we got the following results. So, about the programs that modeling could describe closely, it occurred 12 times in the first sample and 11 times in the second sample. So not that we can describe correctly um, programs that are influenced by one variable polynomial or non-variable polynomials, so constant polynomials. And about the programs that the limitation is due to the interpolation method, uh, it occurred uh, twice in the first sample and four times in the second sample or problems that are influenced by more than one variable so here we, we have found problems influenced by two variables or three variables also we have found a program um, described for a non-polynomial function in the both samples and uh, runtime error occurred when we tried to run a program of the first sample so, okay, as you can see, uh, Morning could describe very well the most part of this program. After conducting these experiments, we have come to two main conclusions. Uh, so, we know that many real world programs um, admit an exact cost model through a polynomial interpolation. And in most cases, we can use a cheap and simple polynomial interpolation to obtain these cost models. We can use uh, Newton's divide difference method, for instance. So, since we have finished the work for this paper, we are still working on this tool, on modeling. So, what are we doing now? We are currently experimenting with multiple counters for the instrumentation. Did we have used just one? So, oh, wait. Each counter is associated uh, with a single complexity path. So imagine a program that have multiple complexity paths. Instead of using just one counter uh, for the whole program, we are using different counters for each of these paths. And in the end, we can derive, you can find multiple cost functions, cost modules for these paths. And doing that, we are able to, to deal with multiple complexity path programs. And we are also experimenting with the least squares method for interpolation. With this method, we can uh, handle polynomials with multiple variables. But in this moment, we are trying to work with two variable polynomials. But maybe we can expand this method for three or four variable polynomials. But programs that are described for three variable polynomials or four variable polynomials isn't so common as one variable or two variable polynomials. And this is the end of our presentation. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you will understand uh, our project. And thank you very much for watching this video. You can find more information about Merlin accessing your GitHub repository by scanning the QR code or accessing the link in the description. And if you have been, any suggestion or you want to discuss the, about this project, you can contact us by these email addresses. And see you in the next video. Bye-bye.